Welcome back, friends. If you haven't been here before, I am Susan Clifton. I live in sunny South Florida. That is not very sunny today. It is pouring out there. Today, I want to talk about high flow paints. So I discovered them probably about a year ago. I mean, I always knew they were out there, but I didn't think they applied to me. I mean, they just didn't seem like something that I would use when I'm, you know, painting. So, but now that I've been doing jelly prints and stuff like that, I still thought, you know, you couldn't use high flow paints on a jelly plate because I didn't think it would like stick to the plate or, you know, like evenly distribute. But then I thought to myself, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe that sort of laciness that's going to happen because little it's going to bubble up in different areas and separate because of the thinness of it that that might actually give us some good results so i thought i would give it a try and i'm very happy with the way some of this laziness did happen so what are high flow paints they are very very fluid and they're really great for like dripping on canvases and that type of like abstract work like if you're into the drips and all that um, but they are a high pigment paint. It's almost like an ink and there's a little ball inside. I don't know if you can hear that close to the microphone, but it has a little ball inside that helps you distribute the paint evenly and you do have to shake them before you use them. And they come in this, a lot of the same colors that other golden products and they are high pigment. So you don't have to worry about it being, um, too thin. And it's also going to dry just like any other acrylic. It's going to be as permanent as any other acrylic. And then you could put any other kind of mediums or varnishes on top of it as you would, you know, fluid acrylics and soft and hard body. So let's get started so you could see how it went. Okay, so I'm beginning with my very first one. Now these are the high flow paints and I'm just, you know, sprinkling them on. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I'm rolling it out on the briar just to see what happens because these are very thin, almost ink light acrylics, but they are paint, high pigment paints. And I did notice that it's sort of, um, separated on the plate it didn't really stick to the plate it started almost getting a lacy pattern which i'm not unhappy with that as you can see here it's kind of interesting and i'm going to do the same thing you'll see it'll start to separate and i'll get these little bubbles these little lacy patterns very random and I'm, I'm trying to dry it a little bit but then I decide I'm just gonna pick it up right over the blue one why not these are all experiments so let's see how it all re reacts now as a piece of collage paper this is uh, not that interesting. So I decide that I'm going to do some masking with this. This is my first one, so I wasn't too thrilled with it, but I decide to put white on top of it. I started with the um, fluid acrylic and then decided maybe mixing that with a little bit of the Amsterdam paints because maybe that's a little bit thicker and might give me a better opaque background. It's still not very opaque as you can see. But that's okay. We'll go to a little bit of that sort of purpley color coming through. Why not? And I've decided I need to cut some new stencil, new, new masks, actually, um, because I'm getting tired of those. They're, they're my go-to, and it's time I go and cut some different shapes. So 
So it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not too bad. I'm kind of liking those lacy patterns. I want to do a little bit more. I want to try to see if I could get a better color combo, something a little bit more colorful. Okay, so I'm going to start with the quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to leave myself some empty spaces for other colors. And I'm going to work multicolored here. Now, as you see, the longer it stays on the plate, the lacier the pattern gets. And I'm fine with that. I think it's kind of interesting, even more interesting than the previous one. So I'm going to let it do its thing. And one of the things that I noticed about this paint is it stays very wet on the plate. So it's not like fluid acrylics where it's drying very quickly. Um, these are super fluid, you might say. Now look at how wet the paper is. So I was a little bit worried there. I thought my paper might rip. This is copy paper. I always experiment with copy paper. Okay, so I'm moving on now to, I'm going to do an entire background of yellow and then um, overlay it over that last pull. And I didn't get the same lacy pattern, so I started burying it some more to see if I could get it to separate on the plate. This time it decides it's not going to do that. So, alcohol to the rescue. I decide if I spray a little bit of alcohol on here, let's see what happens. And I started to notice a little bit of lacy pattern. And then I overlay it. Now look at how wet we are now. You want to talk about worried about paper ripping. Anyway, it, it held up. And I loved the result. And I started pulling up wherever I didn't get it on the paper, any paper paint that was left on the plate. So now I decide I am going to do a black background over some masks and take this one a step further. I'm using the Amsterdam paints to get a nice even black background. And while the paint is still wet, I'm laying it right over the top of that. Now this is the one with the alcohol, so the paper's still a little bit damp. I was a little bit worried about losing some of that paint on the paper, but I didn't. Um, paper is kind of wrinkly, and I wasn't really sure if this was going to work. But, you know, we've got to try these things. Some of the black paint came off on the plate, but I'm loving the result. So I decide to now try stencils. And so I'm just going, I laid down a stencil and I'm just going to sprinkle my high flow paints all around different colors and brayer a little bit, just lightly. Just kind of coaxing it into the stencil. I'm using the same colors I did before, which was teal and I think Hansa yellow and quinacridone magenta. And then I'm spritzing some alcohol on top of that. And then I decided to use my fingers to sort of spread it around a little bit into some of the openings. Add some more paint. This is a little more daring experiment for me. This is completely different than anything I've ever done. I didn't know what was going to happen. I sprayed a little bit more alcohol. Just kind of watching it and seeing how the paint reacts to the plate adding a little bit more where I think it needs it. 
spreading it with my finger again. I don't know if this is very healthy, but <laughs> the things we do for our art. And I'm just kind of watching it because looking to see where improvements can be made. And I want this to sort of be a random design. So I don't want to do too much of like forcing things. So then I left it to dry. It took a really long time. Like I said, this paint stays wet on the plate. I don't know why, but it does. So now it's completely dry. Now I need to add a layer of paint to pick it up because we need some wet paint to pick it up. So I decided to go with Titan Buff. Nice neutral background. And again, I'm not really sure what this result is going to be. Well, it's worth a try. And I'm, I'm testing for coolness and it, it seems I have to leave it a little bit longer. But oh my goodness, is this different. I'm absolutely thrilled. I love how the paint settled in, in and around all the edges of the stencil. And then the areas where I spread it with my finger, we got a little bit different result, but I just love the delicateness of this. It's, it's very different. So then I decide, let's try another one. And I, I kind of brayer them down so they really stick to the plate well. I don't want the paint going underneath the stencil. I like how it pulled around the edges. And I'm going with the same colors, but I'm adding a phthalo blue as well. So I'm going to use exactly the same technique. But I probably going to add a little bit more paint this time. I'm also trying to be random with my paint. And I, you know, I'm not good at controlling the um the paint as it's coming out of the containers. So I got a little bit more yellow there than I was really hoping for. So obviously this is a much bigger application of paint. And I'm not really sure if I'm going to get the same results. But I squirted some alcohol, added some more yellow again. I started like thinking maybe I have too much paint, wasn't really sure, but I wanted to see what would happen if I added more. Then I completely waited for it to, to dry. This took like, I don't know, a half hour maybe, maybe even longer. And so now as you can see, I have a much more solid, especially on the left hand side. Um, I love the way the paints mixed with each other. Um, I'm waiting. I tested it and it still wasn't completely dry. So I had to wait a little bit longer and now I'm doing the same thing with the Titan buff. I don't know why I have a couple of little bumps there. Maybe the paint was a little bit thicker there. And 
little scab maybe. But very happy with this result. Very, very happy. Okay, so that's it for today. Here are some of my finished pieces. I misplaced the one with the uh, purplish background, but here are some of the ones that we finished. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for stopping by today and take care and don't forget, create, inspire, and share. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.